given by Suhas Kalian. Uh, sorry if I uh, mispronounced. No problem. Great. Thank you. Uh, let me go ahead and share my screen. Uh, Howard, if you could relinquish sharing your screen, screen, then I can share mine. Uh, thank you. Okay. Uh, so you will have uh, 15 minutes uh, to present your work, uh, followed by five minutes uh, of questions from the audience. So whenever you're ready. Yes, yes. From beginning, slideshow, share. Okay, are you able to see my... Uh, my screen? Yes. Ah, great. Okay. All right. So this, this talk is uh, entitled uh, Robust Classification of Contraband Substances Using Long-Wave Hyperspectral Imaging and uh, uh, Neuromorphic and Full Precision Convolution of Neural Networks. This is joint work with uh, Kong Che Park, now at Amazon, Jeremy Forrest, uh, now postdoc, uh, Sadipto Chakraborty, my uh, colleague, James Daly from Bodkin Design and Engineering, myself and Srini Vassan, uh, the CEO of Quantum Ventura. Uh, Srini is the uh, corresponding author. So uh, to give some introduction, um, this is about detecting contraband uh, that flows through borders. So um, contrabands are illegal threats such paths through customs and border protection ports of entry. And there's several agencies which seek to stop this uh, flow of illegal uh, illegal material, such as the Department of Homeland Security. The Department of Homeland Security uh, created a um, SBIR, Small Business Innovation Research Grant, and uh, uh, they, they set some very uh, difficult metrics to set, uh, uh, to achieve. So a hardware software solution, portable, non-ionizing, that means no uh, neutrons, no x-rays, handheld, uh, cost less than $50,000 that can be uh, held by a person or uh, have containers moving under it uh, at 4.5 uh, meters sorry, per second. Sorry yes, to, to interrupt you. Uh, you're sharing the uh, author's uh, Yeah, okay. View. Yeah, okay. Um, this always confuses me. Um, On display settings, uh, you mm -hmm. can change uh, yeah okay yeah is this Thank better you very much. okay yes okay great uh so as i was saying very very difficult uh metrics so we partnered with bodkin design and engineering uh who are hyperspectral imaging experts uh to design a high throughput non-ionizing screening capability in long wave infrared using uh, cnns or convolutional neural networks um implemented on both full precision and reduced precision neuromorphic computing. So uh, this is the information on the hyperspectral imaging. So um, the illicit uh, materials that uh, DHS and other people want to detect have unique uh, absorption spectra in the long wave infrared uh, uh, bands as opposed to mid wave infrared or short wave infrared. Uh, so that's where we focused our energy so what you'll see on the top is uh, methyl salicylate, SF96, fentanyl, fentanyl and uh, VX. Uh, VX is a, is a nerve agent. Uh, the others are uh, 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 basically illicit drugs. Uh, and then on the bottom, you'll see, uh, you know, uh, benign um, materials that might be the backgrounds like lignin, which is a major part of cardboard, plastic, and polyester. Polyester is often used in uh, clothing. Um, so, you know, we were able to find the uh, spectral signatures of the contraband, uh, but that's pretty much it. So we had to then create code to create synthetic HSI or hyperspectral imaging of arbitrary chemicals with different backgrounds, different temperatures, and different purities. Uh, so that's, uh, we, we created this new custom code to do that, to go from uh, these spectral curves, uh, and then we can arbitrarily change um, those three factors I just mentioned. So furthermore, we synthesized 27 hyperspectral imaging data cubes. A data cube is something with two spatial dimensions, X and Y, and then the third spectral dimension. Uh, which goes along the, the wavelength. Each data cube had three contraband chemicals side by side at 
three specific temperatures and three specific coverage amounts of purities. Three times three times three is 27. Uh, the data cubes considered, consisted of uh, fentanyl, uh, methyl salicylate, and SF96 on three different backgrounds. Uh, like I said before, cardboard, um, plastic, and uh, uh, polyester for clothing. So you, you can imagine um, a, a border control agent uh, scanning um, some substance, let's say it's on cardboard, they don't know whether it's benign or illicit. Uh, or illegal or illicit. Uh, so that's that's what we're trying to set up is the machine learning system that can detect contraband and distinguish it from uh, non-contraband uh, items. The th three temperatures we looked at were uh, five degrees Celsius, 20 degrees Celsius, and uh, 35 degrees Celsius. Uh, this is to simulate cold uh, room temp or moderate temperatures and hot temperatures. Uh, which you might uh, encounter along uh, various borders. Coverage amounts uh, varied from 100%, 50%, and 25%. Uh, just proof of concept, later on we could expand the range of the temperatures and the coverage amounts, and then also change different, uh, uh, different contraband as well as uh, background material. 20% uh, of the pixels were used for training and 80% used for testing. And then in terms of the machine learning model, we use something called a, uh, a spectral spatial residual network, which is a special type of CNN, convolutional neural network. You'll see it on the, uh, you'll see it on the uh, right there. On the top is spectral feature learning. So it's mixing several bands uh, and using a ResNet type skip connection to learn uh, what's important information to, uh, to fuse across the bands. And then once you do that, you can um, then do spatial uh, feature learning uh, on top of the spectral feature learning. Um, in, in this case, you're looking at uh, overlapping spatial regions. And then finally, you can do uh, max pooling and uh, classification through a fully connected layer. Um, so this uh, we implemented on a GPU, which has full precision 16 bits, but also reduced precision on these neuromorphic um, neuromorphic processors. Uh, and so this the SSRN, Spectral Spatial Residual Network, takes raw hyperspectral data cubes as inputs. So there's uh, seven by seven patches, spectral patches, and uh, sorry, spatial uh, pixels, and then 61 spectral bands. And again, the goal is to detect uh, contraband versus non-contraband. So this is the uh, neuromorphic convolutional network. Neuromorphic uh, processors implement CNNs with reduced size, weight, power, and cost compared to GPU versions. We had early access to BrainChip, one of the uh, vendors in this space, uh, SDK, and that's we focused our uh, efforts on, on using BrainChip. We now have access to the Intel Neuromorphic Research Consortium and are using that for other projects. BrainChip, like Intel, uh, can support many features of CNN, but not all. Uh, so for example, to, we had to remap the 61 bands of the hyperspectral image into separate grayscale inputs, and then fuse across uh, collections of uh, input channels. So you'll see in the uh, upper left, we take a seven by seven image patch of channel one, and then we do that for channel two through three, four, five, six, seven. We glom all of those into one kernel and then similarly for three through 11, uh, five through uh, uh, 13 and so on. So then we're, we're fusing across spectral bands there in the top. Uh, and then uh, with skip connections for the ResNet and then on layer seven, we, tra uh, we transition from spectral feature matching to spatial feature mat matching. So now the size of the spatial kernels is much larger. Um, okay, and so that is, uh, we, this is how we remapped the full precision convolutional network into the reduced precision um, neuromorphic uh, architecture, which doesn't have uh, as many features, uh, but has smaller size, weight, and power. Okay, so here are some results. This is the simulation of the hyperspectral imaging spectra. Uh, 
Uh, you'll see in the upper left fentanyl citrate at uh, one temperature and then another temperature. And then you'll see on the, uh, the blue curve, which is fentanyl, um, uh, it, it, at, a, at 11 uh, na nanometers, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's gone down in uh, emissivity, emissivity. And then uh, on the right, you'll see fentanyl on two different backgrounds, uh, the green curve, polyester versus uh, lignin, a major component of, uh, of uh, uh, cardboard. And in this case, uh, if you go from top to bottom, the emissivity, emissivity has increased. Uh, so this was uh, the ability to model uh, the different uh, contraband chemicals, the different temperatures and different backgrounds and coverages. Uh, coverages is not shown, that's in the paper. Um, and then we have these spectral curves and now we want to simulate what they might look like in a, an image uh, from a hyperspectral imaging camera. So to do that, uh, we're sampling these curves with a uh, normal distribution and some camera noise. And that's what you see in the, in the bottom parts. You have uh, a lignin background at one temperature and one wavelength, and then uh, the three contraband materials. And you'll see that uh, the third contraband material, um, SF96, uh, looks a lot like uh, the lignin background at this um, at this wavelength. And then on the right, you have um, a polycarbonate or plastic background at a different temperature and a different uh, wavelength. So uh, you know, there's 61 of these, uh, for, let's, let's take the left image, uh, lignin background, you have 61 different images like this for one temperature and uh, 61 different wavelengths. Uh, and then uh, same for the right, and in total you have 27 images, so different temperatures, uh, different backgrounds, and uh, different coverage amounts. A coverage in this case means that the, the contraband is not pure, but um, some of the background is showing through, um, through the contraband material. So the full precision GPU convolutional neural network uh, got pretty good results, but or promising results, 64% for fentanyl, 60% for methyl salicylate, and 81% for uh, SF96. Um, so that you'll see on the right there some uh, accuracy as a function of background and accuracy as a function of temperature. And then in the paper, we have accuracy as a function of uh, coverage amount. Um, so overall, 71% accuracy across different backgrounds, 70% uh, across different uh, temperatures, uh, and that's pretty good. Um, the neuromorphic convolutional neural network, we used a slightly different data set and found uh, some performance dis decrease relative to um, the full precision model. Full precision got 70%, 86%, and 75%, uh, whereas the, the, the uh, neuromorphic convolutional neural network got 65, 56, and 55%. And this is somewhat to be expected. You're do using uh, a reduced uh, precision um, a model. Uh, and it, it wasn't a direct translation of the uh, network, but we're, we're looking into uh, improving uh, the ability to translate from full precision to reduced precision in uh, another project. And I'll, I'll describe that other project in my next talk. So uh, the discussion in conclusion, we demonstrated proof of concept of high throughput, high throughput non-ionizing screening capability using uh, long wave infrared hyperspectral imaging and convolutional neural networks. I, and with good accuracy, uh, this combination of techniques can detect and classify contraband in a range of situations. And also the neuromorphic computing implementations offer promising results with much lower size, weight, and power. As, uh, as you probably all know, a GPU uh, is, is pretty large, uh, whereas these uh, neuromorphic computers are roughly the size of a uh, uh, a thumb drive using uh, milliwatts of power rather than 150 watts of power. Also, the, the price is, uh, expected price is much larger. GPUs can be uh, uh, thousands of dollars. Uh, these neuromorphic computers are expected to be uh, less than $100.
Okay, so there was a decrease in um, performance compared for comparing the full precision to the reduced precision, uh, likely due to the limited precision of weights. Uh, and uh, hyperparameter tuning uh, is something that can be used uh, to uh, uh, mitigate this effect. Uh, some, some areas of improvement or potential ways of improving the research. Uh, so, for example, on the sensing end, compressive sensing can be used to reduce the size, weight, power, and cost of the imager. In terms of the HSI hyperspectral imaging synthesis, as I mentioned before, there isn't a lot of data out there, so you have to synthesize it. Uh, we used uh, uh, one method, but generative adversarial networks is, is another method to do it, um, provided you have a good amount of data to bootstrap that process. And uh, uh, as I mentioned before, our full precision and neuromorphic CNN results are preliminary. And uh, certainly we can continue hyperparameter optimization uh, to yield better results. And with that, I'd like to conclude and thank the Department of Homeland Security for uh, awarding us this contract. It was a fantastic project. I'd love to take your questions. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Uh, so now we will proceed with the questions from the audience. So if anyone has any question, please raise your hand and I will assign you your turn. Okay, so we have a question here. Um, is, is there anything in particular uh, for using infrared for detecting these uh, substances that you're you're doing, or uh, any other kind of spectra could be used? I mean, why infrared? Y sorry, did you say far infrared? Yeah, the the, the the kind of sensing that you are you're using in your in your system, uh, as I understood, is infrared. Right? Maybe I'm wrong. Yes, yes, long wave infrared. Yeah, so uh, so people use x-rays. Uh, some people even use uh, neutrons. Those are very large machines uh, which can potentially see through metal, uh, but they're also ionizing. So it presents a danger to the uh, people within, you know, per, in the car, the operators of the machine, uh, things like that. Um, people have tried uh, 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 yeah, so I'm trying to remember the other methods, but long wave infrared is nice in that it uh, is portable uh, and non ionizing. Yeah, but I mean, uh, this is maybe useful for some kinds of drugs or, or particular kinds of things that <coughs> you may try to detect, but they might not be useful, for example, for uh, cigarettes uh, contraband or for electronic uh, contraband or, or different yes. kinds of. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so for sure. I, I think the use case is a, a border control agent would open the trunk of a car or examine uh, a suitcase. And certain things you can pick up visually and other things you, uh, you're you not sure what it is and then the human eye can't determine what it is. So, you know, in, in that use case, the human eye can figure out uh, this is electronics, this is cigarettes, but then it sees a white powder. It doesn't know that white powder is uh, baby powder or fentanyl citrate and that's where uh, it, this, this long wave infrared might be able to detect uh, the contents of that white powder. Thank you. Um, are there any other questions from the audience? Okay, fantastic. Uh, I'll go to the next talk. <laughs> sure, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. All right.